I want to talk about crest releases today, which are used in jumping. It's what you do with your hands when you're jumping. And a crest release gives the horse the freedom that they need when you go over a jump to stretch their neck and use their body um, appropriately. Obviously when a horse is jumping they're doing a very athletic movement with their body and the rider doesn't want to restrict that horse's movement over the fence at all. They want to give that horse as much freedom as possible. There are three kinds of crest releases and they're for three different purposes and depending on how experienced of a rider you are you may or may not use um, different ones. Um, the first crest release is a, uh, what you would call more of a beginner release which is a long crest release and the second one is a short crest release and the third one is an automatic crest release and I'll explain those a bit more when we get into it a little bit further. The long crest release I'm going to show you actually while I'm standing still here and I'm going to be in my half seat which is out of the saddle and I'm going to pretend that I'm jumping and a longer release simply means that you actually gave the horse longer rein. So usually we ride to a jump with a shorter contact and that shorter contact allows us to um, feel the horse from the half seat whereas when we're sitting in more flat work positions we tend to be more upright we may have a little bit longer rein. We also ride with shorter stirrup lengths to accommodate this position of lightness in the saddle. So you'll notice I'll pick up a little bit shorter contact because obviously my upper body is inclined now and so I'm taking up some of that space in my hand. Now generally I like to carry my hands you can see they're slightly in front of the withers and when I'm going to release, a longer release is going to go about a third of the way forward up this horse's neck. So you see I moved my hands and they're on either side of his neck, on either side of the mane, and I moved them up and the slack came into the rein. So that allows him a nice bit of freedom over the fence. Uh, I tend to not use this unless I'm dealing with a very green horse, a uh, horse that is a little bit um, needing a little more space in the reins, maybe needs a little bit of freedom, has a big jump, needs a little bit more freedom through the neck and back. Or if you're a real beginner rider and you're nervous, you know, and your balance isn't great, you're giving the horse a little bit of room so that if you lose your balance, you steady yourself with your hand here on his neck and you don't snatch the reins back, which is a big beginner mistake. You also stabilize your balance when your hand is on either side of the neck. You can press down into the horse's neck. And I like to tell people to push themselves back with their hand because when you press down, there's a tendency to sort of lean on the horse's neck and we don't want to lean on his neck over a jump because you see, he just dropped his head. He said, hey, you're heavy. How can I jump with you on my neck? So my weight is always 95% here and a little bit of my upper body inclined forward. And what that does is, if I need to push myself back into the saddle, you see how I use my hands to push myself back. If I'm a learner or a beginner, this helps me keep all that weight back over his back so he can make a nice, easy effort over the jump and I never ever interfere with him. And that's very important to jumpers because jumpers can lose their confidence and start refusing if they get too many jumps where the rider has interfered with them in some way. So we don't want to, this is also a very green young warm blood and I don't want in him to feel ever that I'm going to get in his way because I want him to feel like he can jump his best and I'm just going to be a passenger. I'm just going to show him where the jumps are, tell him how to get there and let him do the rest. So that's your long crest release. Your short crest release, again, nice balance out of the saddle. Your short crest release is just a little less forward. So I'm not going to make a huge gesture with my hands to move up this way, right? I'm going to just move them maybe an inch or two forward, keep them closer to me, and that allows me to maintain a nice medium contact of the horse, still gets his freedom, and yet I don't have the fear of accidentally, again, catching him in the mouth if my balance is a little bit off or, you know, he makes a unexpected 
change at the jump, an extra large effort, a little bit of a mistake. You know, green horses sometimes make mistakes. So we sometimes have a problem with our balance, which can be unavoidable. You know, they jump silly, they jump funny. Um, they may stop, uh, they may go to the side, all kinds of things. So again, we're just bringing the hand forward just a little, less than the long crest release. A lot of hunter riders tend to use these long and short releases and they tend to be, you know, the short release tends to be sort of the medium one that a lot of people use. Now the automatic release is pretty advanced. You'll see it more in the eventing and the jumpers and um, with more professional riders. The advanced release, the automatic, means that I keep a, a little bit of a feel on my horse's mouth and I don't really move my hand forward. I keep contact with the horse's mouth over the jump. So I tend to use that for the horses that are really, really schooled on the flat and the dressage and really can will not get unconfident about jumping into a little contact. It's good if you're trying to keep you know, a, a little bit more communication with the horse all the way through the jump, uh, maybe in your jump off, maybe, you know, you've got a horse that you don't really want to turn loose, gets a little strong, and you need to sort of keep a feel for him. So that would look a little bit like how I want to keep a straight line from my elbow to my bit. It's a little bit hard when I'm standing still, but basically you see I didn't make a big gesture of moving my hands. I just sort of have them on either side of his neck and I sort of drop them down because that keeps that elbow to bit line contact. Now it might not look exactly perfect because of the way he's standing here and he's a little distracted, but it will tell you the same appearance when you're going over the jump, it will look straight line when the horse is jumping correctly. So he sort of just stretched down into that now. So I don't recommend doing automatic releases when you're not an experienced rider and you have potential for losing your balance. Um, I do recommend practicing these over ground pulls. There you really don't run the risk of interfering with the horse over a pole. You get the same benefit of building up your balance. You can learn and practice all three releases and you're not going to run the risk of the horse making an effort jostling your position and you accidentally yanking on him because you're working on something you know, that's too advanced for what you're ready for. Uh, when you get really good over poles, then you can start doing it over a cross rail or a small vertical. That's your three crest releases.